Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela Osterreicher. I'd like to welcome you today to the WHA Virtual Library webinar. Uh, we'll be talking about conducting a literature search today. Before we get started, I just want to mention that this webinar will be recorded and I'll send an email out uh, in a couple of days with a link to that webinar so you can feel free to view it again or share it with your colleagues. Along with that, I'll send a copy of our slide deck so you don't feel you have to take down all the notes, just take down the ones that uh, are pertinent to you that uh, you want to remember, but otherwise you'll have all the notes here. And it should take us about uh, hopefully 30 minutes to get through this. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box and I'll do my best to monitor that during the session. But otherwise, at the end of the session, I generally leave some time for you to ask any questions. So if you have any and you want to wait till the end, uh, you can pop them into the chat box then. So what are we going to be doing today? Uh, I want to make sure that you know about the WHA library and our services. So a quick blurb on that. But basically, we're going to talk about conducting a literature search today. So how do you get to the evidence? How do you write a question, a PICO question specifically? And just some strategies and tips for searching a database. Now, since we only have 30 minutes today, uh, we won't be going through an actual uh, exam, uh, search, but I do have a, a, an example search history for us to look at. So to start with, the WHA, we are here to provide the, we're the WHA virtual library and we're here to provide the WHA with electronic access to resources and library services. So WHA, that covers WHA staff, all the eligible community health agencies uh, and eligible personal care homes. So you have access to quite a array of electronic resources, that's eBooks, e-journals, databases. Uh, other than that, we also provide our, our usual library services. So we do literature searches for you if you're not able to do them yourself, if you don't have the time or expertise. Uh, we do document delivery. So anything that we don't have a subscription to online, we will get an article or a book from another library for you. And we do education and training sessions like this one. And we will, we will do orientation sessions and customized sessions for your group as well, if you require it. So evidence-based practice. What, you know, since the early 70s, there's been a move in health libraries towards what has become known as evidence-based practice. Sometimes it's called evidence-based medicine or evidence-based nursing. And basically this has evolved because it's a good problem-solving approach for the delivery health care. It requires that you look for uh, well-designed studies and patient care. Uh, that's the best scientific evidence. Uh, you include that with what the patient values are and their preferences along with your clinical expertise and the clinical context that you're working in. So you take all those factors and that provides you with uh, giving the best information, providing the best outcome for the patient, for the organization or for the health system. So the steps to obtaining the best uh, scientific evidence generally requires that you ask a question, uh, you acquire the evidence, uh, you critically appraise the evidence, you apply the evidence, and then you assess the whole process to see if uh, there's anything that you need to change or correct. So we're gonna be talking today about asking a question and acquiring the evidence. So why is it so important to spend time on the question? Information needs are often very complex and hard to decipher. And if you, by creating a very concise question that reflects your information needs, makes searching much for information much easier. Uh, you need to identify the concepts and the information need. Uh, that way you could answer, it'll help you to answer uh, a question. It makes it an answerable question. So generally you need to make sure that you only have two to three main concepts. If you have more than that in your question, 
you probably have two or more questions that you're you're looking into. So to give you an idea of what that looks like, uh, the first one question there has a lot of information there, and that can be boiled down to the second one there that translates down to for women in early pregnancy, are dietary supplements versus placebo effective in reducing symptoms of nausea and vomiting? So how do we get to that? How do we translate it, that information? Uh, there are several tools out there uh, that you can use uh, to uh, help you translate that question. And one of those models is the PICO model, and that's specifically for clinical questions. I just want to point out sometimes your questions are really more background, what they call refer to as background type questions. Uh, so they're they can be easily answered by a review article or a textbook. Um, and those types are not PICO questions. PICO questions are referred to as foreground questions and they're they're patient-centered and they're problematic questions. They involve interpretation and they usually consider risk versus benefit for for patient or group of like patients so as i said there are tools out there for helping you to uh, work out the types of question that you have pico is used for intervention or therapy type questions and i just want to mention that there are other types of tools out there uh, such as uh, if you were doing a qualitative search there is a tool called spider that will help you develop that question. SPICE is used for, uh, pro, uh, for project work or intervention evaluations. And there's another one called Eclipse for evaluating policy or services. Just want to point out that not all your questions may fit the PICO question format. And as I said, the PICO uh, is specifically for intervention or therapy. Uh, it will help if you use that format, it will help you to formulate a good search question. So uh, it's an acronym and the P stands for patient population or problem. Uh, it'll help you think about uh, define in your question, who are your relevant patients? And that will help you decide whether age is important, sex or geographic location or other specific characteristics that might be important. It could also stand for population or problem as well, uh, or a prevention issue. So intervention, so what is the, I stands for the intervention. So what is the intervention, diagnostic test or exposure that you might be interested in? Uh, C stands for comparison, and you don't always have a comparison, uh, but if you do, you, you'll, you'll, you can indicate it there. You, you want to know whether or not there's a control or alternative management strategy uh, that you would like to compare to the intervention. O stands for outcome. So what are the patient or, or population level outcomes of uh, most significance for you? Uh, or what are the consequences? What are you hoping to accomplish, measure, improve, or affect? In some cases, not always time or type of study or question uh, can be important, and you might want to include that in your question as well. So if it is, uh, so what time periods should we be considering? Uh, what type of question would be, what you know, you'd have to figure out what clinical domain does your question fall under, whether it's diagnosis, etiology, harm, therapy, prognosis, or prevention, and that will help you de determine what type of study you, you uh, would need uh, to look at. So, that is probably still clear as mud, but there are these tools and the URL is there for you. Uh, these are a couple of questions that will uh, fill in the blank questions that will help you format your question for an intervention type study, uh, in intervention type uh, question. Uh, there are other question uh, formats for, uh, th this one's for intervention, there are other ones for diagnosis or etiology, so forth, and they're also available at that URL as well. So if you can fit your question into this format, that will help you formulate, formulate your question. 
Another good tool I found was available at uh, this URL that I have listed here. It's a PICO template. It just helps you to remember what the PIC and O stand for and also helps you figure out what type of question you have and then indicates uh, what uh, type of study would be ideal for that type of question. So we've gotten a, a little bit into how to get to the evidence for therapy or intervention or diagnosis types of questions. The best evidence, they say, is a systematic review or a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials. So that would be your number one thing that you would look for if you have a therapy or diagnosis type questions. Uh, if you don't have that, you would look for uh, randomized controlled trials. Next, you would look for non-randomized control trials and so, so on down to the bottom, uh, which is expert opinion. Uh, and I have a, a URL there if you want to explore that a bit more. But you may have seen a, a pyramid, uh, that information uh, in a pyramid type of system. There's many, lots of different types of pyramids out there. I happen to like this one. The librarians uh, typically use this one. And it just emphasizes that there is a hierarchy of evidence. Uh, and it's not to say that, uh, you know, that if all you have is expert opinion, that that isn't good enough, but that may be all that you have. So as you can see here at the top, we have systematic reviews, critically appraised topics, critically appraised individual articles. Those are the informations that are filtered, uh, have been appraised. So the quality of evidence uh, has, ha, is, is better for you. Um, Further down, we have uh, just randomized controlled trials, cohort studies, case controls, so forth. It's unfiltered information, information that you would have to look and, and determine the value of it in your instance. And then at the bottom of the pyramid is background information, books, journals, and expert opinion. So, the next thing that you have to do once you've determined your question and written it hopefully in a PICO question format so that it's answerable, is to map out your search terms. So in a simple question like this, is hypnosis effective during labor and childbirth? I would underline the concepts that I'm looking for, which I've done there, and then put it into a map. The map is usually uh, a chart of three columns. You don't usually want more than three concepts that you're looking for. Uh, that can make the search too narrow, uh, but uh, generally one to two to three uh, concepts is good. Uh, what you're gonna do is take each concept and then determine what the phrases and different synonyms and variant spellings of that specific concept is and put them in one row of the columns and then do that again for the next uh, concept as well. So as I said in this example I've, uh, I've labeled, I've underlined the two concepts. So in the first column there I have labor obstet obstetric, I've thought of labor, I've, I've thought of childbirth, I have the alternate spelling for labor, uh, in the second column there, I've started listing um, hypnosis, hypnotism, hypnotherapy, hypnotherapies, the plural. So this is very much an, uh, an iterative process. So as you're searching, you might find more terms or think of more terms as you're, as you're moving through the search that you might want to come back and consider using. Uh, you don't want to have too many search. You want to have make sure that you use the most relevant ones that will will help you get information uh, for your topic. So I've made this list. Now, how do I put all those terms together? Uh, databases use rules known as Boolean operators uh, that help you build your search. And these allow you to combine uh, different concepts in different ways. Or 
is a Boolean operator that is used to expand a concept. So here I have the concept of heart attack. I've thought of a couple of other terms that I can use, myocardial infarction, cardiac arrest. Boring those terms together means that I will find all the information in, in the circles as well as in the intersections of the circle. So it's going to really broaden the search. Uh, and as I said, you don't want to overdo it with the number of terms you have. You just want to use what is the most logical and, and not make it too broad, but keep it as specific as, pro as possible to your question. And is the other Boolean operator that we use, and it's used to focus a search. And you use it uh, when you want the results to contain all the concepts important to your research. So this example, uh, if I was looking for information on the use of exercise by an elderly population as part of a fall prevention program, you would search uh, perhaps on the term elderly, on the term exercise, and the term fall prevention. And you're going to get a very narrow search. You're just going to get what you see in the intersection of all three of those circles. Uh, that's what it's going to find. So here you want to be careful that you don't have too many concepts because you may end up with zero results if you have too many uh, variables in there. There is another Boolean operator. We don't use it too often. Uh, we caution you on using it, and that is the not. That will exclude words from your search. Uh, so if you're, for example, searching for articles on nursing and education, but you didn't want anything to do with breastfeeding, you would enter it as nursing, education classes, not breastfeeding. And that would mean it would only find articles on nursing and education classes and exclude all those ones on breastfeeding. The reason it would be dangerous to do that, we caution you to about using the knot, is all it has to do is say in the article uh, abstract, uh, this article is a review uh, on nursing education classes, but we have decided not to address breastfeeding education classes. And you would have excluded that article, even though it was a review on what you were looking for. So going back to our, uh, our, our term mapping chat, uh, chart, uh, this is how you would apply the Boolean operators. All the one concepts, uh, the same concept, uh, different spellings, different uh, names, different uh, uh, plural values of the, of the terms you would OR together. And so you or all the childbirth terms together and you would or all the hypnosis terms together. And to combine them, you would use and. But you still need to know a little bit more about Boolean operators. Databases uh, follow a specific logical order when using Boolean operators. They will recognize and as the primary operator and will connect concepts with and together first. So it's almost like math. So in this first uh, example here, stroke or cerebrovascular accident, accident or CVA, so forth, I've gotten 100, over 125,000 search results in CINAHL because I entered it as one long string. And what it's done is done CVA and constraint-induced movement therapy first and then it's ORed all the other uh, terms in there. So what you need to do is you need to combine the ORs together, and you do that by putting brackets around them. So by putting brackets around stroke or cerebrovascular accident or CDA and constraint, and then bracketing around constraint-induced movement therapy or CIMT, I get quite a different result, uh, search result hit of 603 results. So if you have too many results when you're, you're doing your search, definitely review your search strategy, see if you can be more specific and add in other concepts to help narrow your search. 
always double check that you've used your Boolean operators correctly, remembering that OR broadens your search and AND narrows your search. Uh, remember, uh, to narrow your search results, you can use limits. Most databases have limits in them that you can apply to a set of uh, search results. Uh, usually we use date range or language. You can use publication type. Uh, you could also consider using phrases if possible. Now, some databases assume words typed next to each other should be searched as a phrase, as in PubMed, but in others, you have to actually put the phrase inside quotation marks. So in that previous example where we had 603 results in CINAHL, I've gone in and uh, added quotation marks around the phrases cerebrovascular accident and then constraint induced movement movement therapy and that's reduced my results to 576 because rather than singular words it's it's searched it only as a phrase you can also consider using advanced features such as field searching and subject headings now i have a screen here the next screen shows you uh an, this is an article uh the record in CINAHL and what I mean by uh, subject, subject headings, uh, you can see here in the middle, major subject headings versus mi minor subject headings. Uh, that's important to know that you can actually limit your search either through the MeSH terms or through the database in CINAHL. You can actually limit your search to just search for major subjects. And it's pretty self-explanatory. It's it's indicating that uh, the article that you're looking for uh, is is strongly talking about mainly talking about stroke rehabilitation uh, as opposed to if it was just in a minor subject. So you could eliminate some records that have stroke rehabilitation as a minor subject. Uh, you don't really want to look at those ones. You are doing a, a review on stroke rehabilitation and you want to look at things that have, lim have indicated it's a major subject. Otherwise, you can use uh, the subject, these categories here. You could uh, limit your search and say, I want to search for keywords that are found in the title, uh, in the abstract um, that's below there, and or in the author keywords. So all these. Uh, terms here are, are uh, searchable and you could limit your search that way. Um, now the other problem you can have is you could have too few results. So again, you would uh, review your search strategies to see if you can think of any more synonym terms to OR together. Uh, you might need to add a few to, to find more. You can check to see uh, Always, again, check to see that you're using your Boolean operators correctly. Uh, it happens to me. I sometimes accidentally uh, OR something when I should have ANDed it, and that can really uh, change your results. So double check that. A couple of other things you can do when you have too few results that we find is a good tip is using uh, proximity rather than phrase searching. And also consider using truncation in your search to include all possible uh, root endings of a word. So, for instance, therapy, if you were to truncate therapy to just therap, asterisk, which is a common truncation symbol, uh, you would find therapy, therapeutic, therapist, so forth. That can be a problem sometimes too. If you truncate too far, uh, you'll get too many hits. So, just uh, we'll talk a little bit more about those last two in the next slide here. So many databases allow you to specify that the words you are searching are within a certain proximity of each other. And that helps you sometimes to be more specific in your search. The idea is that the closer two words are together, uh, the more relevant that they are. So it helps to make a much more specific search than a Boolean operator could. Uh, proximity searches vary from databases, but some of the more the most common ones are N number sign or W number sign. So N number sign is stands for finding words 
that are near each other in any order. So chronic near three pain would find chronic pain or the reverse pain that is chronic. Uh, and it would be within three words of, of each other. Uh, W3 stands for within a specified order. So primary within four words of care has to be in that order. It won't find the reverse order, so you can specify that. The asterisk sign is something that we use, uh, is commonly used among databases to, at the end of a string of characters, and it will retrieve all the variations. So I could uh, create a search strategy with decision asterisk, so it will find the plural of that. Near five, I've bracketed my ors, aid or aids, uh, that might be a problem. Uh, it might find a lot of other uh, root endings as well, so I might have to rethink that one. Or support, supports, or tool asterisk, or tools. The question mark is also one that uh, we sometimes use, and that's helpful generally when we have um, various spellings, uh, British spellings, that you can actually it replaces a single character within a word. So standardized uh, will find the uh, spelling with S or the spelling with Z. So that's a handy one to use. And as I mentioned, you do have to be careful with using truncation. If you truncate a word too uh, early, uh, aid in that example, or in the previous example, therapy, if I truncated therapy to T-H-E, that's going to find a lot of words that I'm not interested in, uh, things like theology, thermal, thespian, that type of thing. So how do you put all this together? It's a lot of information. Uh, we have a question here uh, that has been put into the PICO format. Hand expression versus the use of an electric electric breast pump in postpartum mothers and success in breastfeeding or milk production. So I've put the PICO example up there, a population we're looking for breastfeeding or mothers who are expressing milk, uh, intervention hand expression, comparing it to electric pump. The outcome is breastfeeding success or increased milk production, and the time period is postpartum. I started a mapping the terms. I used a combination of thesauruses that are in the uh, various databases. Uh, I typically start with PubMed and the MeSH terms that they have there, and we're gonna look at that in a minute, so don't worry about that. And then I've also done some preliminary searching and some brainstorming myself as to various words that I can use. Uh, my concepts I have here are breastfeeding or expressing, uh, hand pumping versus electric pumping. So I've started that, and as I've, as I've said, it's very much an iterative process. So as I'm going through this process, I might come across other terms that I might want to include in here, which means, yes, I have to go back and, and redo some of my searching. So I started with, let's just go through this first one here. Lactation is a mesh term. It's a source term that I came across. I could think of lactation and lactating. Uh, another term I thought would be breast milk expression, another mesh the source term. Uh, I thought, well, I came across things that talk about milk expression or expressing milk or expressed milk and so forth. So as you can see here, this is how I've started, and I've already started formulating in my own mind how I would probably be entering these terms with some of the tips and strategies that I told you about. So uh, lactation would be entered as that because it's a mesh term, but then lactation and lactating, I could probably truncate uh, after the, t uh, the second T there. I could put an asterisk there. Uh, milk. The next three, milk expression, expressing milk, or expressed milk, I'm already thinking I could probably truncate it, express, truncate it there, so we'll find the various ending variations. And I'm also going to probably use a near two uh, in there as well, 
it's because it'll be it'll find uh, either this this uh, format or the reverse of it. So I've already started formulating in my mind how I'll probably enter those things. Next thing I'm going to think about is the type of question. So this is a therapy question, uh, intervention, a diagnosis type of question, and that's going to remind me that. These are the uh, types of publication types that I'll probably be wanting to look at. So if I wanted to get to the evidence fast, I'd probably be looking for RCTs, uh, generally uh, systematic or meta-analyses first. But of course, if that's not to be found, then the other ones are relevant as well. I'm also going to start thinking about what databases we have and, and uh, I'll give you a URL in a minute uh, as to how you get to our databases. But we have a list of databases that we subscribe to for the WRHA and that we have uh, Medline would be one that I would use, CINAHL, Joanna Briggs and Cochrane is another one. So to get to the Medline database, you would use, book, go to our URL, our main page, bookmark that, I would suggest, go to resources, select library collection, collect, click on the M to get you down to the Medline section, and then just scroll through there to select Medline with full text. At that point, you need to log in with your WHA virtual library username and password. That will bring you to this uh, page, which is the uh, search box for Medline with full text. Now, I mentioned uh, a lot of the databases have thesaurus. So to get to the thesaurus, up at the top there, you would click on MESH 2020 right there, and that would open up another search window for the MESH thesaurus. Uh, I've actually already entered the term lactation. Uh, to search the word lactation in the MeSH thesaurus and it's brought me to the thesaurus and says yes that is the MeSH term to use. I can explode that term which means if there are terms underneath lactation that are more specific it will search for those as well if I click that box. I can click major concept. Remember I showed you we could limit our searches to major concepts or uh, minor concepts. Uh, I could click that and it won't find anything that any records that have it just as a minor subject. But I've left it, uh, I've not checked either one and I have a third option if I wanted to, I could check a subheading. So if I was looking for drug information to do with lactation, I could actually click on the subheading drug effects. But I've actually not done any of those at this point, I just wanted to show you those. So back at the search box, I have two choices. I can search word by word, which is the way I prefer to do it, or you could enter that long search string where you'd have to remember to use brackets, use your ORs, use the brackets around the ORs, uh, truncate and use uh, uh, asterisks for phrases, your AND, and then your other concept ORs. You can put that in as a title, as a complete string. But as I said, I prefer to enter my terms in one by one. So I, as I said, we don't have a lot of time to do that today. So I presented here the, the search that I did do and just to give you an idea of what it looked like. So the mesh heading, lactation went in there. As I said, I, I already started formulating ideas. I could truncate lactation from lactating. That will find other variations there. I've used my near to milk, near to express, which will find variations of that ending and, and various orders of milk express. And I've gone through that. So uh, set one to seven is one concept. I've ORed those all together. I get quite a few hits. My next, I wanted to search for manu, uh, manually uh, expressing. I've got my concepts there and I've ORed those two concepts together and I want to find records that talk about uh, electric pumping and I've merely put in pump whether it's electric, manual or what. Uh, I decided at that point to just put it in as pump, truncated, and so 
the ORs set 8, set 11, and set 12 are anded together, and I only ended up with 49 results. So at that point, I didn't feel that I needed to do any further um, uh, limiting. I didn't need to limit by date or, or language or anything else, because 49 is easy enough to skim through, and I was able to pick out several good references from that. My next step would be to continue on with other databases. So going into CINAHL, uh, I would, or Joanna Briggs Institute is a evidence-based nursing database or the Cochrane Medicine Evidence-Based Database. I would need to review my terms, make sure that the subject, uh, the subject headings could possibly change with the different databases. And I'd have to check uh, my truncation and proximity rules for each database, and you can do that by looking in the help section. Uh, I've given you a lot of information, so we do have some videos that explore some of those topics in more details, and we have our complete YouTube channel there as well if you wanted to see all of our recorded message. I'll give a quick shout out to the WHA Virtual Library Search Guide and the University of Manitoba Health Sciences Library. I borrowed a lot of the formatting and information from their web pages to put this webinar together. Uh, we've gone a little bit over time here. I apologize for that. There's a lot of information. You have chance now if you have any questions to put them into the chat. I haven't seen any during the session. But uh, as you're thinking of them, uh, on our last page here, you have our uh, URL. Highly recommend that you bookmark that. You have our, our uh, email and telephone number to our main office if you have questions. You have my email if you'd like to speak to me directly. If you see the ask a symbol on any of our websites while you're in on our websites or in our databases, then you can ask a question right there and then and chat with someone live. And other than that, I would suggest highly that you sign up for our newsletter. That way you can keep on top of what uh, sessions we are providing or what new databases we have, um, so forth. Is there anything, if, if there's any questions, now's your last chance to put it in the, in the box. Uh, let me just see, I think, what is the best way to include acronyms? Um, acronyms can be a bit tricky. Uh, you can include, I would test them out in, in the database first. Uh, sometimes you have to put them out in full. Uh, if, if the acronym, if you test it out uh, in the database and you, you, you get back re relevant results and you don't get overwhelmed with results that are, are uh, false hits uh, that don't match your request, then it can be a bit tricky to use and you might need to use it in full or use it uh, in conjunction uh, with near, a near another word that might help eliminate some of the false hits. So, I don't know if there's any other questions here. Uh, I see someone's raised their hands if they, if they have something. What uh, database access do we have besides Medline? Well, we have a whole list uh, of databases on our website under resources there. Um, I probably couldn't tell you them all. We have CINAHL. Uh, we have MCARE, which is another nursing database. Uh, we have PubMed. We have the Medline database. We have some specialized databases. Uh, we have the Joanna Briggs Institute, which is a nursing database. Uh, we have specialized ones uh, like uh, per, per, nutrition databases. Um, just off the top of my head, but the full listing would be on our website. Do we have any other? I see someone with a hand raised. Uh, uh, 
Rakshita, uh, if you could put your question in the chat box or in the question box, uh, I'll, I'll uh, be happy to address any questions you have. Those are good questions. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions here. I apologize. I hope I haven't missed anyone. I'm just scrolling through this to see if I don't see anything else new coming up. You have my contact information, so don't hesitate to uh, contact me directly uh, or just our office in general. One of the other librarians would be happy to help you as well. So thanks very much for participating. Uh, it was a really quick overview. We don't have a lot of time and we've gone over already. So I apologize again for that. I know you guys are very busy. So thanks. And we'll send out the deck slide and the link to the webinar uh, later this week. Everyone have a great day and uh, take care. Bye-bye.